Yes, yeah. So Courtney, Dave, everybody at home, uh, we do have that northern eye wall that's starting to get onto the coast. It's brushing the coast right now. Uh, the center of the eye is about 40 miles offshore from Sarasota. So we're getting pretty close to landfall here. Now these stats will be updated. It's being updated every hour, but I wanted to show you some uh, wind reports that we're receiving. First, let me show you where that where we're talking about here. So all the maroon boxes that you see, those are our flood warnings, which by the way, they also have been extended uh, northward into Pasco and Hernando County. But here it is. Here's the center of the storm. The winds will continue to get stronger here as that eye wall moves on shore, which we're seeing happening right now. These wind reports, I've been updating them basically every five minutes as I uh, refresh the page. I'm starting to see winds jump up more and more. Sarasota and Bradenton, a great example here, closest again, 40 miles offshore, the center of the eye of the storm. I had winds about five, 10 minutes ago that were 66 miles per hour. Hour, jumped up to 77 miles per hour. So again, we have to have those gusts that are um, sustained for a certain amount of time to actually clock in and it, they just keep rolling in. We also had Egmont Channel. That was one of the earlier uh, stronger gusts that we saw at 77 miles per hour. Albert Witted, 66 mile per hour gusts. St. Pete Clearwater, 61, which it may even be higher than that because I grabbed that one about 10 minutes ago. Venice, 68 mile per hour gusts. So we're talking tropical storm force winds. Hurricane force winds are anticipated soon. Uh, and again, we were talking about that uh, extreme wind warning that the National Weather service said that they likely will be issuing for parts of the area as Milton continues to make its way on shore. So what that means is there's extreme hurricane winds that are either imminent or happening and they're expecting sustained winds of 15, 115 miles per hour or greater and that's when they will issue that warning. Of course, once we get those warnings, we will uh, provide them to you and what you need to treat this as is you need to treat this as it would be a tornado warning. Although it's not a rotating wind, these winds will be just as strong as a tornado, if not stronger, and you need to get inside uh, an interior room away from windows because, again, the uh, number one way that people are injured during strong wind events is flying objects, projectiles, glass breaking, window shattering, whatever it may be. So again, if you are under the extreme wind warning, what's your none issued right now, but we're getting pretty close with the 77 mile per hour gusts that we're receiving. Once we reach that threshold of 100 to 115 mile per hour gusts uh, that are sustained, sustained wind, I should say, that's when we could expect that extreme wind warning to be issued. Now, as far as the wind impacts, the highest impact will be stretching from coast to coast here as Milton continues to move on shore. Because don't forget, even as the storm does weaken past that uh, Category 3 status, once it moves on land, these systems weaken very quickly because they are warm water uh, storms. They love that warm basin, right? But once they move on to land, they quickly weaken. Well, that still means that we will have winds that are 111 mile per hour winds uh, in excess in some spots in this area right here. Of course, the area impacted the most with that landfall. But this red area right here will have winds 95 to 110 possible. So again, if you have that wind report coming into your region, you need to treat it seriously. As far as the watches and warnings here across the rest of the area, not much change for our hurricane warning, still taking up a large portion of the peninsula here. Um, our surge numbers have started to change a little bit, but they are still very high and comparable to what we had for Helene. As far as uh, forecast winds, this is our model here, our in-house model. Let's go forward a little bit more as this eye continues to uh, make its way onto the coast. Again, usually when we have the eye that moves onshore and it's considered landfall, when we have that perpendicular uh, center point, that's when we will see some calming. Usually people say, oh man, uh, it, it was calm, it was beautiful. It's really around the eye wall that we really have to be concerned. And of course, the diameter of that eye, right? So we have the fronter eye wall, we have the back eye wall, and the center of the storm usually does have calmer conditions, but it doesn't last long. It depends how wide that diameter of the storm is. So as the storm continues to push off to the east, those winds will follow it and the threat of uh, wind damage along with it. So again, here's a closer look at the radar. I wanted to see if we could get our flood warnings up here. So here's all those weather alerts. The flood warnings, again, 
in that maroon color. I know there's a lot to look at. Have been extended. Originally, we had it for uh, DeSoto, Hardy, Highlands, Hillsborough, Manatee, and Polk. So it did get extended into uh, Pasco and portions of Hernando County. We also have uh, that tornado watch. But again, the tornado threat hasn't been as large. Now we're just concerned with the winds associated with the hurricane. So latest on Hurricane Milton here again. This is the 6 p.m. advisory. We are waiting for the 7 o'clock advisory coming out every hour. Winds 120 miles per hour around the storm and pressure is greater than it was earlier. So that in indicates some slight weakening and the storm is moving northeast at 15 miles per hour. So we're not too far away from landfall. I would say within uh, the next few hours here, uh, we will be talking about landfall and seeing the impacts from there. And don't forget, once we get landfall, the impacts will follow for a few hours after that. That doesn't mean we're necessarily in the clear no. guys.